Welcome to the mother Relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. Newly crowned WBO champion Michaela Mayer says, If the money makes sense to rematch Sandy right away, then I will do that. If it makes sense to fight Jonas next, then I will do that. After the pain attack that Sandy suffered after leaving her hotel, I hardly think she's going to be in a rush to come back to America to run it back with Michaela. Sandy would probably want that rematch to happen in the UK. She would, but Michaela wouldn't. Michaela, who said if the money makes sense to rematch Sandy right away, then I will do that. If it makes sense to fight Jonas next, then I will do that. I heard her at the end of that fight. I was cracking her hard and my hands have never ached so much after a fight Mayer told me as she recalled the fight with Ryan. She was walking into everything so I knew I was up on the cards. I was boxing her in the beginning then in the middle rounds my coach said to get back to your boxing. I thought shit I was getting caught up in the fight and I didn't realize it so I'm glad I had my corner to snap me out of it. So then I went back to my boxing and she started to run into those big shots. Sandy was ducking right into them. So I was positive that I had won the fight. My team was celebrating that I had won the fight, but I said, wait, let's get the decision first, Mayer told Fight Post. We had celebrated before. Remember thinking we had got the fight. Kofi was saying, no, Michaela, you've got the fight. But I said, we've been here before. I got a little nervous because I looked up at the screens and saw Mark Kriegel's scores, who had Sandy winning. And I thought, what? My brain just started spiraling. It is that his scorecard or the real scorecard. So that made me a little nervous. But when the second score of 97-93 came in, I knew it was for me because there could be no way it was for her. I just felt it. I felt confident. We knew she would go straight back, so I doubled up on my jab, and I knew she would walk straight into my right hand. That was part of the game plan, to get ahead in the beginning and make her catch up. All she does is come forward. There is that saying, something like, a charging bull can't run in circles, and that is kind of her style, and she didn't have the experience in her corner to help her adjust. Despite coming off that narrow defeat to Jonas in January and the mental scars of that heartbreaking loss to Baumgartner still lingering somewhere deep within, Mayer went into the fight with supreme confidence. I was really confident going into that fight, Mayer told me. I had already been through the worst, so it was only up from here. I knew I had done all the work. We had a good game plan. I just felt so confident. There was no doubt in my mind this would make the last two years all worth it. I knew this was my fight. The WBO Bowl will now give Mayer an extra little bit of importance at the negotiation table, the missing piece of the puzzle. I did feel incomplete without a belt, Mayer says. I totally felt like that. I felt nervous as to what was next. I had a vision of what I wanted my legacy to be. And I was so close to having one of the best stories ever, but this just makes my story more real. It shows that a career does have ups and downs. I could see everyone else having a perfect career, and mine was just falling apart. But this has just made it worth it. It feels like I am back to where I belong. And I like the fact that people thought that Sandy would bully me and make me crumble. It made me want to prove them wrong. I always knew what would happen. In my head, I thought, I ain't got nothing to lose. Let's go. Mayor of her pre-fight thoughts, I took the pressure off myself and I just went out there to do the best I possibly could. I thought, if I can't beat Sandy, then I don't deserve to have that position. So I just took all the pressure away. I knew I was the better fighter, and I went out there and proved it. I definitely think it was the best win of my career, just because there was so much on the line. She was a game opponent who made me use all my tools. It was also live on ESPN at Madison Square Garden. It was probably the best slot I have ever had on a card. Then there was the rivalry, and I was the underdog. We had a great press conference. I knew that I had the truth on my side going into this rivalry with Sandy. She couldn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe and spit in facts with what actually happened, it sold the fight. And it was a good little way to sell the fight. And the paint controversy? Michaela said, people are coming at me as though I planned it. It's not tarnishing my win because nothing can take this belt away from me. But there are some people who think that I cheated and I only won because I tried to sabotage her. But they are just the internet trolls. What if she had pulled out of the fight? I don't know who threw the paint, but it doesn't make me happy because it would have jeopardized everything I had been working for. Sandy could very easily have pulled out of the fight. I don't know that Michaela is the one who planned it, but I do think it was someone in connection with Michaela because Sandy Ryan is just not well known enough in America 
that some random person would deliberately attack her. How would they have known at what time Sandy would be exiting her hotel to make her way to the ring? That's inside intel. Only people on the inside would have known that. We are open to a rematch with Sandy. I've always wanted to give the fans what they want, and if the fans want a rematch, then we'll do a rematch. It will be a big money rematch, and it would be great for the sport. But we also want the Natasha Jonas rematch, so right now, my team and I are figuring out the timelines and what is best. They will come back to me with all the options. The money is definitely a factor. If the money makes sense to rematch with Sandy right away, then I will do that. If it makes sense to fight Natasha Jonas next, then I will do that and do the rematch with Sandy afterwards. There are a lot of moving parts at this point. Here's the part you want to pay attention to. After four fights in England and suffering those two defeats on UK soil, a return doesn't seem to be an option for Mayer. I am not going to the UK. Why would I do that? That would be the stupidest business decision ever. So now ask yourself, if Michaela Maya has no intention of boxing on UK soil, who's to say that Sandy Ryan has any intention of boxing on American soil? Or Natasha Jonas? It's pretty crazy what they did to Sandy Mayer says of that decision. I didn't have a belt, so they could have very easily have got a rematch clause, especially as it was on the top rank card. That would have been a trade-off. Suggestions of Ryan being let down by her own team do, on the surface, have some validity. Her management let her down. The same way Michaela Mayer's management let her down in the negotiations for Baumgartner not having a rematch clause, it's the same with Sandy and Michaela. Sandy's management let her down. Undisputed would be great. I want to collect the belts Mayer relayed to Fight Post, but I think I care more about making the big fights oh. rather than going undisputed. So here's the problem, folks. Here's what it is. Whether you're talking about shooting for Undisputed or making the big fights, the quote-unquote big fights, for Michaela Mayer, it's the same situation. You've got to pay those Brits enough money to come over here because you don't want to go over there. You haven't had any luck over there. I can't say I blame Michaela Mayer. She got jobbed, in my opinion. She got robbed in the Natasha Jonas Fight. So if you go back over there to Liverpool for a Natasha Jonas rematch or Wales for a Lauren Price fight, same thing's gonna happen. And you wouldn't go to Derby for a rematch with Sandy. Ideally, you would bring those fighters over here. You spent the last two years on the road on British soil. Now you want to have some home field advantage, and therein lies the dilemma. So will they. I don't know how they're gonna work that out. The only way it works is you have to pay to play. You have to offer those fighters, those champions, enough money that they'd be willing to travel, otherwise they won't. And it's as simple as that. In men's light heavyweight news, on the heels of this weekend's mega match, very disgruntled Vadim Kornilov has declared that they will be filing an official protest over the Artur Better Beef defeat, specifically Paul Cardini's 116-112 scorecard. We're gonna file the protest on Monday. I think the judge has to at least have some kind of responsibility for what he did. It's becoming very destructive to the sport what they're doing. These sanctioning bodies have supervisors. The supervisors are friendly with the judges. They're hugging the promoters. It's beginning to look like a scheme. One of the supervisors was tapping the top ranked guys and congratulating them before the decision was announced. What's that about? What kind of buddy-buddy relationship do they have there? Where is the professionalism in the sport? You always hear me say that two things can be true at the same time. Two to three things can be true at the same time. A lot of things can. What Vadim Kornilov is implying is that the fix was in. Conversations were had behind closed doors. Money exchanged hands to ensure that our tour would win. That could have happened. Boxing is a dirty sport. It's a dirty business that has no oversight, no universal body to oversee everything that's going on. Without that, anything can happen. And any adult with any semblance of life experience knows that relationships play a factor Actor. Relationships matter. So when so many of these people are connected with each other, you never really know. You can't rule it out. That the fix was in. But here's the kicker. Here's the twist. Even if the fix was in, based on the fight that I saw, there is a legitimate argument that Artur won legitimately by a narrow margin, at least on my scorecard. But he did enough. Two things can be true at the same time. Three things. 
If you tell me that you scored that fight 7-5 in Dimitri Bivol's favor on the premise that he was landing cleaner punches more often than Artur, I wouldn't disagree with you. I could totally see that. You scored the fight on the premise of clean punches landed, and based on that, Dimitri should have got the decision. Somebody else might have scored that fight on some other premise. Say ring generalship, which is also part of the scoring criteria when you score a round in a boxing match. Looking at that fight, Artur sent the ring general to me. He seemed to be the one that was in control, and Dimitri was fighting for control. Sometimes he had it, sometimes he did 7-5 either way or a draw is what makes sense to me. Based on what I saw, you could score it 7-5 Bivol, you could score it 7-5 Artur better beef, or you could score it a draw. A draw being the most fair way to go. Well, I'm a lot more even-tempered than your average boxing fan. Saw an article that claimed Dimitri Bivol was robbed and it's disgusting based on the CompU box numbers. The CompU box numbers for Artur Betterby versus Dimitri Bivol have been released, showing how close the fight was. The two boxers faced off for the undisputed crown. Better Beav won via a majority decision to make him the undisputed light heavyweight champion. However, the result divided the boxing community, with many feeling that Bivol had been robbed. Better Beav's corner was heard telling their man that they had to knock his opponent out but when it came to the judges' scorecards, they saw things differently. A lot of people are reacting to that. That ought to a better beef's corner. They must have thought he was down on the cards. They must have thought he was losing. Otherwise... It's a major goal for our, our team. Uh, that was a very, very close fight. Like, Bivol came with a heart and, and a, a, a good defense in that fight. A lot of movement. But I think at the end of the day, like, Archer showed uh, why he's an undefeated and an undisputed champion. That, that was a question of time. Like, when we start to hitting him and be closer with the distance and everything, I know that the fight was going to be worse. I see majority of the round maybe for Bivol at the beginning and the fight turnover. Even at the uh, round number 10, I, t I told Archer, we need to knock out this guy because I want to create, first we need the, the three last round, but I, I need to create that emotion inside of him to fight, fight, just don't wait for him, fight. So we're in the opinion of some, Team Better B felt they were down on the cards and that's why they were urging Artur to get a knockout. Mark, in his own words, says that he was trying to create a sense of urgency. Isn't that the same thing? Not necessarily. He's trying to keep him inspired, keep him motivated, and keep him in the fight. Dmitry Bivol was clearly left disappointed while Better Beef's team shut down any claims that there had been a robbery. And looking at the stats, it was a close fight. Bivol managed to land 50% of his power punches. And this was a lot more than Artur Better Beef, who only managed to land 29% of his. This meant that Bivol could connected with 33 power punches over the first six rounds while Better Beef only landed 23. But when it came to the second half of the fight, Better Beef was stronger. He landed 67 power punches in comparison to Bivol, who only landed 51. And when it came to the home stretch, Better Beef was stronger in rounds 11 and 12. He landed 29 more power punches, while Dimitri only managed to connect with 19. They were also separated by just five punches in total. Bivol outlanded Better Beef with 142 punches, compared to his opponent's 137. Bivol also landed with more jabs. He had 58 compared to Better Beef's 47, but Better Beef landed more power punches, with 90 compared to 84. Those are narrow margins. Hard to distinguish in real time. Therefore, the fact that one judge had it 116-112 drew the wrath of Eddie Hearn. His comments were also backed up by Frank Warren, who felt that Bivol had done enough to win. Setting up the narrative for a rematch in one of the biggest fights of our generation, the most important fight of Dimitri Bivol's life. You give him four rounds, he told the DAZN broadcast. It's disgusting. You heard Better Beef's corner in the 10th round. They told him he had to knock him out. Top rank knew he'd lost. I'm absolutely baffled and disgusted. I don't want to disrespect Artur Better Beef. That judge should never work again. Four rounds to Bivol in a fight of this magnitude. It's disgusting. I gave it the Bivol by a couple of rounds. That score of 8-4 is beyond ridiculous. Everyone around the ring thought that Bivol had won by at least two rounds. There should be a rematch because it was such a high quality fight. Brilliant skills in there by Bivol. His jab was superb. Artur, the last couple of rounds was told it was sink or swim. The 8-4 score was a joke. It's terrible when you get a fight like that and it ends in controversy 
Warren stated, I can only hold to what I've been telling you. That fight was so close, so tight, that it could have went either way. I don't think Artur getting the decision was a robbery. Even if Vadim Kornilov thinks there was more going on there, Pro boxing fans, Vadim, um, talk to me, man. I know you're disappointed at this present time. Your man, Dimitri Bivol, losing um, the undisputed to Artur Bertspeer. What's your thoughts on the scoring for that fight? I thought it's at least a draw. Like I just said over there, it's at least a draw. And, uh, you know, they, they should respect the champions, both of them. Not taking anything away from Betterbeef. He did a great job. He was coming forward. But at the end of the day, you know, if you count the cleaner landed punches, I think Dimitri won the fight. Did you feel like even whilst he was fighting on the back foot, there was so much success from uh, Dimitri that, you know, them, them judges that maybe may, maybe were looking at the aggression of Bersibier didn't look at the back foot, good work from Bibol? Like I said again, you can't only look at aggression, you know, you got to look on uh, the, the landed punches. Uh, people always talk, oh, some judges like people coming forward or other judges like people coming backwards. But why is it always that our guys are the ones that, you know, th there's always a justification. Like, oh, he wasn't coming forward or he was going backwards. What do they expect? That somebody's going to push Arthur back? I mean, the, you got to box him. That's the way you, you win a fight like that. You got to box. And that's what Mitri did. From what Eddie's saying, he's saying that there's potential rematch. Is that something that you and Dimitri want? 100%. Mitri will only be better. And uh, I know His Excellency is there for justice. He's always about, these guys are really about, you know, being manly. And, and they, they, they like justice. They're, they're about morality. They're about ethics. And... And I think that's uh, what's going to make this fight happen again. Hopefully it does, because at least in my opinion, it was close enough. It was competitive enough. And there was enough there that a second fight is warranted. So many times in boxing, especially these days, we get rematches that we really don't need. If for no other reason than somebody had a rematch clause. There's a lot of that. Where it used to be that a rematch would need context, aside from a contractual obligation. So hopefully we get a second fight. Turkey wants to do it. So does Eddie and Dimitri. See what Artur thinks. Visibly frustrated Vadim Kornilov, who suspects foul play based on certain network relationships. I can't say that he's off base. It's entirely possible. It is. And the pretenses in which a fight is being scored, scoring patterns in postmodern boxing. Is it now the norm that the aggressive fighter, the aggressor, will always get favor with the judges? Is that the norm? Because it wasn't in the previous era. It's a legitimate question. And even in some instances, in the modern era. Gustavo Limos didn't get favor over Richardson Hitchens, even though he was the aggressor. He was the guy coming forward throwing punches and bunches, but he lost. I remember a lot of people thought that Brian Castaño beat Jermel Charlo in their initial meeting. Those two more recent instances in recent years, the boxer got the consideration that Dimitri Bivol didn't get, even though Dimitri Bivol put up a better fight than those guys. He's a boxer. Put up a better fight than Hitchens against Limos. Put up a better fight than Charlo against Castaño. Even though the scoring criteria is set on how you score a round in a boxing match, it still seems like it boils down to preference or perhaps interpersonal relationships. All I know is Dimitri's gotta do better in a rematch. Gotta do better.